Hey, welcome to Memphis AP Chemistry. In this video, I'm talking about one of my favorite things in chemistry, which is Le Chatelier's principle. I remember learning Le Chatelier's principle back in college and thinking, wow, this is so intuitive. In a world of chemistry, which can be very abstract, confusing, Le Chatelier's principle just makes a lot of sense to me. So I'm ready to share that with you. So what is Le Chatelier's principle? Essentially, it's a way to predict what's going to happen to an equilibrium reaction if you disturb it in some way. It says this, if a system at equilibrium is disturbed, the system will shift to counteract the effects of the disturbance. Now, the disturbance could be really one of three things. It could be a change in concentration of either a reactant or a product. It could be a change in the pressure, and that's going to be when we're dealing with a reaction involving gases. And then finally, it could be a change in the temperature. And we'll have to look and see if a reaction is endothermic or exothermic to predict what change will happen if we increase or decrease the temperature. Now to really understand equilibrium and Le Chatelier's principle, you got to think about things like thermodynamics and reaction rates, the things that are really going to drive these equilibrium reactions. But before we get into all of that and all of the chemistry behind it, here's a simple metaphor that will make this whole thing, I think, a lot easier and more intuitive for you. The metaphor is kind of silly, but it, it starts like this. You've got an island with two countries on it, and we're just going to call those country A and country B. Country A and country B both have populations and a population density that's about equal. We're going to take a look at what happens if we add people to country A or if we remove people to country A. So let's start with that. If you were to add people to country A, well, country A is going to start to get really overcrowded. Here you can see that I added some people to country A. Um, and you can see that country A is starting to get overcrowded. What's going to happen? Well, people are going to move from country A over to country B. And that should make a lot of sense. There's a lot more room in country B, and so people will move from A to B. In a similar way, we're going to look when we add concentration of A, let's say A is a reactant, and that's going to shift the reaction toward B, which would be a product. Now, what if we do the opposite? Um, let's go back to how we started, and let's say that we remove people from country A. So we'll remove some people from country A, and we'll see that there's a lot more room now in country A than there used to be. So let's remove some people there. You can see that there's a lot of empty space in country A, a lot of places for people to live. And so country B, which is now relatively crowded, well, a bunch of people from country B will move over to country A. And as they do that, the concentration of B will go down, and then the concentration of people in country A will go up. We're going to think about this metaphor as we continue on and talk about actual reactions happening. Let's look at what happens whenever we change the concentration of either one of the reactants or one of the products. Back to our country metaphor, this would be like adding people or subtracting people from one of the countries. Let's look at this reaction, uh, nitrogen gas plus hydrogen gas yielding ammonia gas. This is an important process in industry. It's how we create ammonia, um, which is called the, the Haber process. Let's think about this in terms of an equilibrium. I'm going to use the metaphor here of a seesaw. And if we add or subtract things from one side or the other, that's going to make our seesaw unbalanced. Let's look at this first. Let's say that we add nitrogen gas to one side. So the nitrogen gas um, increases. Now that's going to throw off the balance of our seesaw. And so our seesaw is going to tilt this way because we have more hydrogen gas now. And that's going to be weighing down this side in our seesaw metaphor. Well, according to Le Chatelier's principle, this reaction is going to shift in order to balance the seesaw back out. And so um, which way does this need to shift in order to rebalance our seesaw? Well, this is going to need to shift to the right. It's going to shift toward the products. In the country metaphor, this would be like adding people to country A in the reactant side. And so people are going to move to country B. And so the reaction shifts toward the right. Now, what's going to happen to those concentrations? Well, if this reaction is proceeding more to the right, that means that hydrogen gas is going to decrease in concentration because it's going to be reacting with that excess nitrogen in order to produce more ammonia. What's going to happen to the amount of ammonia then? Well, more ammonia is going to be produced as we shift the reaction to the right, and so our NH3 concentration will increase. Now, we could predict all of that just by using Le Chatelier's principle. Again, we said we added nitrogen gas 
if we add more to the reactant side, well, that's going to shift it to the product side. And so hydrogen concentration will go down and ammonia concentration will go up. An important thing to, to keep in mind here is that the K value, our equilibrium constant, is actually going to stay the same. Even though the reaction is shifting in order to balance out the disturbance or to, to neglect the disturbance, the equilibrium constant, that ratio of products over reactants, is actually going to stay the same. We added more reactants, but now we're forming more products. And so that's going to end up actually balancing out. And we'll have the same ratio of reactants of our products that we started with. In other words, we'll have the same K or equilibrium constant value. Um, and so we'll see the seesaw there balance out. Let's take a look at another um, example. What if we were to remove hydrogen gas? This would be like removing people from country A or the reactant side. Well, if you remove hydrogen gas, well, now you've got more sort of space in country A. And so what's going to happen? Ammonia is going to decompose and form more hydrogen gas and nitrogen gas. We'll shift the reaction to the reactant side. Um, we'll see that by removing H2, it shifted the equilibrium, so the teeter-totter in this metaphor is going to, to be lower on the ammonium side, ammonia side. And so it's going to shift toward the left in order to rebalance out in our teeter-totter, um, our seesaw metaphor. That's going to cause the NH3 concentration to decrease because we're shifting the reaction to the left. And it's going to cause the nitrogen concentration to increase. It'll also cause the hydrogen concentration to increase as well as we're forming more nitrogen and hydrogen gas here. Again, we can predict all of that just by using the Chatelier's principle. Finally, let's look at one more example. What if we were to remove ammonia? Take a moment, pause the video, and see if you can predict what's going to happen if we remove the ammonia. So, um, ammonia concentration is going to go down, and that's going to cause our teeter-totter to um, become unbalanced and sort of fall on the, on the left side here, because we have, suddenly have less NH3 to weigh down this side. And so what's going to happen? That reaction is going to have to shift toward the right in order to balance back out again. So the reaction shifts toward the right. That's going to cause hydrogen concentration to decrease. It'll also cause nitrogen concentration to decrease. And so that ammonia concentration will go back up in order to balance out with the same equilibrium constant ratio of reactant or sorry, products over reactants that we started with.